Hi everyone, it's National Eating Disorder Awareness Week and in honor of that, I wanted to create this video for parents out there who have teenagers who may be struggling with disordered eating um, and or a full-blown eating disorder. I don't have kids, but I am a nutritionist who has worked with teenagers for the last seven years um, at a specialty um, treatment center for kids that suffer from anxiety, depression, eating disorders, you name it. Um, I am their nutritionist and I try to get to the bottom of what's going on at home. And I've noticed three big mistakes that a lot of parents are making out there. And this is not to come down on parents out there because I am sure it is such, it's probably the hardest job Ever. Um, I don't have that job. I am not a parent, but like I said, just from uh, watching and observing and asking questions, here's just some advice that I can offer you if you're looking to um, build healthier habits around food and nutrition for your kids. Whether they have disordered eating or not, this is a really good video for you to watch. Um, period, even if they're young or old, whatever. The first, uh, sorry, there's three big mistakes. And the first one is really leaving kids in charge of making their own decisions when it comes to food. I talk to tons of teenagers who are left to their own devices. They're, um, they're skipping breakfast. They're not eating all day at school because of various reasons. Some either they say they don't have the money or no one packs them lunch or they're too embarrassed to eat in front of other people. There's so many different reasons why kids skip lunches um, at school. And then they'll come home and again, nobody's home so they're just eating junk food or whatever they can get their hands on and then dinner comes and either they're ordering out, they're with their friends, um, or uh, there's no planned dinner time with families. So that's the first big mistake. Do not leave it up to your kids. It's your job to teach kids what good and healthy nutrition and eating habits look like. The earlier, the better. Um, sometimes when they're already in their habits of eating whatever they want, whenever they want, as a teenager, it's really hard to um, change those patterns and habits. So starting them the earlier, the better. Remember, you're in charge and you're responsible for their well-being, um, so for their nutrition. And I can make more videos if this is if there's a lot of parents out there watching this about how to do that. Um, you just let me know if you want that. But the second thing, um, the second biggest mistake I see with a lot of kids, especially young girls with disordered eating, is that a parent, either the mother or the father, usually the mother, um, is obsessive about her own nutrition. Um, sometimes it is the dad too though. And um, you know, they're obsessing about calories or they're on, they're constantly doing diets, right? They're on the latest diet trend, whether it be um, keto or Weight Watchers or whatever that is. And a lot of kids actually have parents that have put them on Weight Watchers as children. Um, which could be seriously psychologically damaging over time. So please, whatever you do, do not bring your, t your young kid to a Weight Watchers meeting. Please don't ever do that. Um, and stop obsessing about your own food, okay? I suggest that you get a handle on your healthy eating and your healthy mental well-being um, and try not to do it in front of your daughter, especially boys too, but really girls are always looking up to their moms and they're seeing what they're doing, they're seeing what they're eating, they're seeing how they speak to themselves, if they're calling themselves fat or ugly or restricting their food or binging on their food, right? They're, your kids are always, always, always going to pick up on that. Um, and then they're going to emulate you as well. And then the third biggest mistake that I see parents make is not having family meal times together. Honestly, um, let's even not even talk about um, eating disorders right now. All kinds of kids that, again, are suffering from anxiety, depression, all different kinds of um, behavioral issues, Come, a lot of them that I've seen anyway come from families that don't have family meal time together. Again, they're left to do their own thing or, you know, 
food is ready in the kitchen and everyone kind of scatters. Mom and dad in front of the TV, kids go up to their own room, now they're on their phone and now they're, you know, stuck in front of a screen instead of using mealtime as a way to bond and talk about health and your day and anything and, and establish that relationship. So again, I can go deeper into all those different sections if anyone out there is interested, um, especially obviously in the nutrition part, how teenagers need to fuel their brain um, and little, little kids too, obviously, their brains and their bodies for optimal energy, how um, food eating at certain times of the day and actually what they're eating is going to affect their moods um, and how right now anxiety and depression is really rampant, um, but we're not teaching kids how to self-care and take care of themselves and feed themselves regularly and how to eat balanced meals. So again, if you want any of that, let me know. Um, you can reach out to me directly or leave a comment below. I'd love to be a resource for you. And in the meantime, uh, if you see a kid out there that may be um, restricting, binging, Right? Talk to them, ask them questions, see what's going on. Um, it's either going to be, you know, from societal societal pressure, from pressure at school with different um, from different kids out there, and or maybe from parents as well. So um, check it out, and I wish you luck, and I wish you the best. Okay, thanks. Bye.